Hey subscribers. Okay, been waiting forever, so let's build this then. This is the X210 with the Luminaire pod. So I had to make these holes a little bigger right here and right here. The back ones fit fine. And then I took and took some of this off there so it fit better in the back side. See, it's nice and because it doesn't really, I'm gonna probably punch a couple holes there so I can zip tie down the XT60. So we'll do that as we go. I don't remember if I even Loctited the motors on. I just kind of threw them on just for visual sake. So I'll re-pull out the screws one at a time, Loctite them, put them back in. These are the King Kong 2205 2350 KV motors from Banggood and the frame is from Banggood. This is from the pod is the Luminaire pod is from Get FPV. All the links will be in the description below and most everything else that's here is all from Banggood. Got buzzers, got yeah I'm only using a 20 amp because it's got um, 5 volt BEC and I'll be running like I did on the Genius 215. I'll be running the camera and the VTX. They'll both be running straight off, so there will be no PDB. It works fine on that, so it should work fine on this. And everything else kind of will be pretty much exactly the same as the 215 build. It's going to be really basic, really light, and we're going to do this really quick. Here is the X4 RSB, and I got that from Banggood. It is not the naked version, but it will get depinned, decased. So, we have some soldering to do. We are going to lengthen these because obviously they're not long enough to go inside of the compartment. And then we will shrink wrap and we will use, this is going to be all black if you haven't noticed yet. So it'll be a total blackout except for the red bottoms on the King Kong. So we got everything here and if I don't cover anything in this video, there's a lot of stuff in the Genius build that I have on my channel. All the uh, firmware flashing and all the flashing of the ESCs and all that other stuff is in my other video. So if I skip anything and you wanna see something more specific, jump over to that video and then about quarters of the way through or so, then it'll be for the FC, it's gonna be, sorry, uh, CC3D, the F4 board and all the setup flashing and everything for that is on that build video about halfway through. I can link the video in the description so you can just jump over to that one. There's no sense in me going through all that again on this one. It's the same exact procedure but on a different video. So I'm not going to show you every solder joint but I'm going to take and extend all these and then I'll be right back. This is the last one. I'll just show you real quick what I've been doing. Just grabbing a chunk of wire. Stuff goes a lot smoother if you got a good adjustable soldering iron. You can do it the way that I have been with just a regular cheap Walmart soldering iron. But if you're going to do more of it, it's nice to have an adjustable for depinning and other stuff so you don't have to put too much heat on the board. And just make sure you get a real good solder joint on them. Then when you're soldering these on, when you pull away, you leave a little sharp part. So you can either go like that and just glance it and it'll melt it right off there. So there's no sharp part on there. So you don't want it poking through your heat shrink. I haven't had it happen, but I could see it happening and see it being an issue and shorting out on the carbon fiber. Just like that. And I don't have any heat shrink cut. I'm just using what I got. I don't have any more black left because I used that up right away. So I got blue. It'll be hidden inside of the sheathing. So it's not that big of a color. I just don't want to use like yellow or something that you could see through. So then I just put on the heat shrink. Not gonna show it, but I'll probably do two layers of heat shrink. I'll do this layer and then I'll do another layer 
just to be safe. So that's how I did those. Now we got them all extended. So what I'm going to do off camera now is I'm going to go around, cut shrink wrap, and I'm going to put more shrink wrap on all these. And then when I come back, we'll fasten down the foreign one and we'll kind of get everything kind of laid out where we want it. I believe it has to go this way and then out the back like that. And then these, I believe I went under and over to the top of the flight controller. So we'll see when I get back. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got the second set of shrink wrap on everything. I believe I go with a long enough screw that this is all stainless hardware that came from Banggood. I want to be able to get a strap under the video transmitter has got to go on top of the stack because you got a hole here for it to come out so it can only be so tall and it looks like it'll still work fine if I do it that height. So we'll just try to run it at that and see what happens. And I don't... I'll get a measurement on all this stuff after we find out if it's all going to fit properly or not and then after that I think I'm gonna go one steel or one stainless steel nut and then on top of that I'll go with a nylon on each one and then I'll do that set this on top and I'll be right back as long as this plug fits we can do it that way plug fit wow that's pretty tight in there you can see the plug the wires are right against the side there and that's not going to leave hardly any room to be able to plug in your flight controller man that's going to be Super tight, but it'll go. Okay, so I jumped a little bit further ahead. I got all the fire loom sheathing on, and I conformal coated. The lighting is really bad right now. Forgive me, sorry. The conformal coated the uh, foreign one and it's all bolted back down. I can formal coated. Be really careful so you don't get any on the sensor when you're doing the camera. So the 1177, I got that all coated and I just gotta put that back together. I am gonna solder everything onto my flight controller so that I can unplug and conformal coat that so that'll be all ready too and then the only thing we'll have to conformal coat is the receiver the x4r sb so i'll do that this and then when i come back i'll be ready to screw all that down so like i said this is just going to be a real quick once over on the process so i'm not going to show every little solder joint so when I come back, I'll be ready to screw this all down. So I got most everything done. I wouldn't suggest doing this for a beginner. So this is gonna go on top of here. And then it's gonna stick through this hole and get zip tied down. I have it like this just cause I'm gonna power up, make sure everything is good. That is the tightest stack ever. I flipped the flight controller upside down 
and I rotate it at 90 degrees. So there's like no room on there anywhere. I gotta put the two screws back through because I had to pull the, make sure you put your XT60 on first. So otherwise you gotta fish it out of there and solder it on. It's a lot harder. So get your measurement to where it comes about like that. And then I'm gonna drill two holes, one on each side of it, and then zip tie it down that's where it's at so I'm gonna power it up and make sure everything's good nice it's not bound yet seems everything works change this F2 there we go E3 is what I usually run on make sure there's video and then I'm gonna call it Ta da! So we got video. Everything's good. So all that's left is try to shove everything under the canopy and screw the canopy down. Yeah, I know I got a lot of long wires there because if you ever have to pop this thing off, you got to be able to. I think I'm going to put this inside of the canopy so I'm just gonna mount it through here zip tie it down and it'll just kind of be hanging in there on that zip tie right there probably not the best idea but we'll see it does actually fit if you put double-sided tape right here and here you can actually double-sided tape it on so I'll bind it and everything and then we'll take it for a maiden flight tomorrow it'll be a first test on these motors these are the King Kongs everything looks good so far we have, I'll get my caliper so I can measure how long those screws are. 15 millimeter screws that went through the four holes for the flight controller and the 4-in-1 and everything. So on the top I put two nuts and then I put the 4-in-1 ESC and then I put one nut on top of there and I went with five millimeter standoff on top of there and then I flipped the flight controller upside down and rotated it 90 degrees so now you can see where the port is on the bottom side of the board facing off to the right hand side motor ones right here so now when I go into the configurator I'll have to set it so the configurator or so the board knows that it's upside down and rotated 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees sorry everything is so super tight in there definitely do not recommend this for a first build it's pretty tight so the the VTX is just kinda zip tied to here and it's kinda just up inside of there because the wires hold it up in there it's not really gonna go anywhere because there's no place for it to go camera is super tight in there uh, the camera you only get so much tilt angle I believe it's because of this zip tie right there that I got holding the receiver on you can see the receiver right there it's naked now I stripped it and conformal coated everything and I just gotta bind the receiver to the Tyrannus and then button this up and then I will take it for a flight so if you do want to do this I'll put all the parts in the description that I used I did drill two holes on the back side drilled one hole right there you can see on the bottom I drilled I drilled that one there and that one there so I could run a zip tie over the XT60 so it doesn't pull on the wires when you're trying to plug and unplug your battery and that all fits on there just really nice and neat it's really hard to get everything tucked back together just like that and then you try to put screws in it <laughs> you can see how you can plug in now that I flipped the board before when the board wasn't flipped you wouldn't you'd have to cut some of this out to be able to get it to fit but now it fits the XD60 is tucked in there 
super tight, clean, and I just got to put the strap through it and then bind the, the receiver and we're good to go. So I'll do that really quick. Same flight controller and same ESCs that I used in this 215, the Genius build. Everything should just go exactly the same. So if you need to know any of that, it's all in the video, the build video for that. You can about three quarters to half to three quarters of the way through the video. It has all the firmware and all the setup and everything in that video. It's real detailed. I'm going to do this quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so the Lumineer Potted X210 is all done. And that's the 1500 Infinity on it. So, well, there's no props or nuts. But the weight on that is going to be... Okay. So absolutely everything, 502. All she wrote, time for a test flight. I'll take it for a little rip here. I haven't flown at FPV yet. I'm just adjusting my goggles. I just got them out of the box. So this lens is not very wide. So I'll just do a little line of sight right here real quick just so you can see. It's really quiet with these dial four blades on it. So there's hands off, drops a little. I haven't fixed my transmitter yet. I still got the notches in there, so it's hard to get it perfect hover because it wants to grab on the notches. It's like halfway between a notch where it's gonna hover perfectly, so. But it feels like super, super dialed in. Full throttle is crazy. Tuna actually feels really good. And I just set it the same as my other quad, so. Ooh, almost smoked that tree. That thing wails. I love flying it with those props on. The dial props, the 544s. Those things are pretty awesome. First time trying them. 